another episode of working on my HDO scale railroad. This time I'm going to be demonstrating a, a simple method of paving gravel uh, gravel area on on my uh, HO car repair shed uh, in Inner Bay, Washington. This is a overview. You've probably seen it before. Uh, and the the car repair shed is is underneath these three tracks. And I tried an experiment of using this uh, EVA foam that's black now, but we're going to make it gray in a minute. And then I tried putting some ballast to pave in between the rails, which the prototype does. Let me flip the phone around, and then I'll show you a photograph. I'll put this in the tripod so you don't have to get jiggled anymore. If you go on Google Earth and take a look at this facility, what you can see here is the car repair shed with its three, its three tracks uh, going in and out of it. And you can see some pavement uh, asphalt, presumably, that they put down. And then the pavement comes to an end. And then you just have gravel, the gravel between the rails. So they can still drive trucks and so forth, they being the railroad. Here's a close-up of that area on the left, which is what we're modeling right now. And you can see here that the pavement ends. And this gravel, which is almost the same color as the pavement, continues. And whenever they get to a switch point, they just leave the ties exposed. So I want to, um, I, I don't have room for this entire spread, but obviously I want to make it look as close as possible to the prototype. And I think you're seeing this area of the layout right now. Can I improve the focus of that? So here's an experiment I did of just trying to put down some um, Woodland Scenics fine gray ballast looks like this. There's stock number uh, B1375. This isn't my favorite material because it's made of crushed walnut shells, I believe. But I have a lot of it on hand, so I thought I'll just use this to make the gravel. And I tried this out a couple days ago, it worked fine. I glued it with my diluted Elmer's glue. And so I thought I'd show you how I put it in. I want to extend it to the left here. And I want to show you how easy it is. It's kind of it's kind of a crude demonstration, but I thought you might enjoy it. So here, here I'm just, and of course I already ballasted the track underneath, which I didn't in theory have to do. I'm just going to pour all this on here. I think what we want to do is just go up to about where the switch points are here and have that be the extent of the pavement. But I like the idea of, of, of this It's just interesting to drive a train across rails without all those ties, at least in a place where it's prototypically correct. Now you can see I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just dumping it on. I'm not even using a, a smaller, I could use a paper cup or something to do this, but I'm in a hurry. And also I'm just dumping this in between the rails. I'm, this is much cruder than a normal ballasting job. All I wanna do is get enough ballast on here to make a, a flat surface. Now. Over, I think I will use a, a a paper cup for the detailed work here. Of course, naturally, I don't have a paper cup handy. Let me grab one. That'll take me a minute. Well, it's not a paper cup, but this will do. This is from, uh, this is just a cup from, uh, applesauce 
wouldn't let my wife throw it away in the recycle bin. So I'm just going to be a little more careful over here because we have switch points to deal with. And I want to get the ballast up against the rail, but not into the switch point. So that's a little tricky. And I want to leave, I'm going to leave this basically alone because I saw that in the prototype photo they did. But I, there's no reason I can't come out to the edge of the layout here and ballast. Now, it seems to me that in order to come to the edge of the layout, it might make sense to put a piece of tape on there and get the ballast closer to the edge. Although I think we might have trouble when we're gluing it with the, with the glue running down here, but let's try putting a little dam here to hold the ballast. There are, there are a couple ways that you could do this. I'm not going to go all the way to the end with it. I just want to go right here. There are a couple ways you could do this um, damming here. Um, Like I say, the problem with this is when I go to glue it, the glue is going to run down the masking tape and mar the finish of the front fascia. But maybe it won't be the worst catastrophe this railroad's ever seen. Um, okay, so now that we've got a dam in place, we can finish putting this up. Now that I think about it, I should have put the dam exactly the height I wanted this. But we, we got to make sure not to forget our real goal, which is to keep this stuff out of the um, switch points. All right, I'm going to tap a little bit of it here. A paper cup works better because you can make a sharper point on the edge there. Okay, so let's just say that this might be enough material. I, I'm not sure how you how to tell. Let me just take this down to eye level. You can see that I didn't I didn't didn't put too much more than needed. Uh, and now for the for the question of how to straighten it out or level it. I mean, and of course, after we level it, we've got the problem of how to clear the flange ways. So I'm just going to use this scale rule here. I've got the layout turned off, so I don't have to worry about short circuiting anybody. And I'm just going to drag it along and see how it pulls up some of the extra material. This will create at least a, a reasonably level surface and will give us an idea of where we might need to put some additional material. And that looks like we really didn't get quite enough material, which is much better than having too much, I suppose. And So put a little more on. You can see we'll level it again. What we want is to have enough that we really are coming up. The material is really between the rails. I know this isn't the most fascinating subject for a video, but it is a part of building a model railroad layout, so. We'll give it that much at least. I'm a little puzzled about what to do over here next to the yard lead because it, I don't wanna cover up all the ballast over there, but
what I'm going to do is tip the thing. It's trying to make a slightly level grade there. You see how that's going? That looks pretty good. A reasonably level grade. Yeah. And then we can, well, I don't know. Now, is that enough or should we add more? I think I think a, a couple more places that were low. If this was a little higher technology operation, we could use a computer scanner to a laser to level this, but we're just horsing around here. You can just see the difference in color between the glued down ballast over here and the untouched dry ballast. Oh yeah, that's looking way better. See how the the whole thing is at the level of the ties now? Much better. Just drag that over here. And now we have a pretty decent surface. Now in the in the prototype, this is just gravel that was worn, you know, over time down to the height of the rails. And probably it even goes slightly below the rails in the prototype. But um, it's just easier to level it like I'm doing here. I still am missing, well, I could do a slight angle here. Yeah, that's that's better. I don't need to have it. Yeah, that's good. So now we want to finish this little area there. I hope you can see this all right. And now we'll look one more time before we glue this. Look one more time. Do we like how it looks? Does it seem flat? Here, I'll, I'll show you uh, how much better it looks now than it did the last time I lowered it. See how it's nice and flat. And I know you don't have the best focus in the world on this, but... Um, I Oops, sorry. I just uh, wanted you to see what I'm doing with my own eyes. I'm looking down to see that it's flat. <coughs> There's one area I'm a little concerned about. It's this area right over here where I can still see some ties. And so let's put a little more in there. And let, and ooh, that looks a little low also. Let's try this. Now this makes me really nervous over here. And that's a help. But it's not it's not up against well that's probably all right, but yeah. Yeah, I needed to put a little more there. So let's try this level. Going the wrong way so you can't see if it's working, but it's pretty clear that it's working. Now, clearly, we need to get rid of that gravel that went next to the switch points. And we'll get them out of there right now. I'm not too worried about about the ties because I'm not going to apply glue to it, but of course the glue moves, oops, oh, the glue moves around. <clears throat> when Once you put it on, so let's just try to fix that. I kind of want to get it away from this hinged point here. Take down any, 
Now, of course, I can always come back later and fill in a spot if, if we decide it's ugly. Now, it, you could glue it right now, except for one very critical problem, which is that the, you want the flange ways to be clear. Now, the various ways you could do this, clear out the flange ways, you could use a, uh, some wheels from a truck, uh, from a car. But if I just run this along here, it will, you can see it's bringing the, it, this is an NMRA standards gauge, if you're not familiar with it, a um, piece of steel that you can use for checking the track gauge. And you can also, as you're seeing here, use it for clearing out flangeways. It might make more sense to have an actual to, for me to make a, a flangeway template. See how much extra material this is getting? I think it's just because the um, method I was using with that six inch steel rule was a little cruder than this. This is getting right down in between the ties and leveling it off. And we like that. And we'll do it on this track too. This all seems very tedious, except that one day we'll be enjoying videos of switch engines running across this without any concern in the world. I don't like that that stuck out farther than I want. But I do like that there's a little bit more of a flange way here now. See how that picked up some material from the side track? Now, of course, having the gauge at an angle is not smart because I want the maximum depth of those little pins to get out the Wow, look what that did. Yeah, so that's that's pulling some of this gravel away from the inside of each rail, which of course is exactly what we were hoping it would do. Exactly what we were hoping it would do, but it's not enough. And it also seems to me that now when I did that, it probably ruined everything I painstakingly did over here, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what do we think about this situation now? It looks pretty good. And before we glue, we still have the issue of clearing out the, the frogs. I like to use one of those picks that we use, those uncoupling picks, because they have a really nice sharp point. Oops. You have to put up with certain out of Now that actually doesn't look like a very clean point. Let's take another one. This one's a little better. And if we just drag this through here, get all these. Now it's, it's much, much easier to remove these little pieces of 
ballast when the surface is dry than it is to remove it after you've glued it down. Trust me on that. Once you've glued it down, the only way you, you, you the Elmer's glue is pretty hard and um, you really have to chip away at it with that screwdriver, the metal blade. But beforehand, you can just, you see how I cleaned that out so that you won't have to worry about picking the flanges of cars up out of the flangeways. Now, of course, as I did this, another tool we can use for leveling, which has an advantage of being somewhat bendable. Anyway, we definitely wanted to do that and get rid of those little grains. Fortunately, that's the only frog that we had to deal with on this one. Now, I'm very unhappy about this uneven edge over here. So I think what I'll do, since I have the vacuum cleaner handy, is we'll just vacuum that up. That's the simplest way to get rid of it. Hopefully we can do it without making a mess. And the best way to contain the, you can re recapture the excess with a stocking, but I, this is so little, I'm just gonna do it like this. I didn't want to uh, take too much away, but that was a bit of a problem to have that sticking out. Now you could say, well, just don't put glue there. And, and it might, that might've worked, but my experience is the glue kind of migrates around. So how do we feel now? Like I said before, I think you don't want to be too much of a perfectionist about this because you can come back later and if you wanted to smooth out this edge, you could do a smaller job. And I, I'm not comfortable with having this much stuff next to the rail, so we'll just shove that out. It used to be that my hand was steadier, but I don't know if you've heard this, but if, as you get older, your, your nerve cells die off. And the reason that old people have so much trouble with balance is partly because they have half as many nerves in their feet as young people. So they just, don't have as much data, their brain doesn't have as much data to work work with. So, you see how with a little bit of care here, I'm creating a, a more open flange way, which is much easier to do before gluing than after gluing. And depending on how quickly it gets to be lunchtime here in Seattle, I may have to stop before uh, we get to the gluing, but that's all right. You're getting the idea of what we need to do here. We need to clear that flange away. And of course we need to do it on the side we can't see because it's not about what it looks like, it's about uh, how it operates. Yeah, this, this is a very nice tool for this purpose, isn't it? It just rolls the ballast off. I'm hoping you can see this on the camera. 
It just rolls the ballast off enough that you have a fighting chance after the glue dries to not have a mess on your hands, at least operationally. All right, so that was those two. Here's this one. Experienced model railroaders will tell you that they don't use Woodland Scenics ballast because it's it floats. It's made of um, walnut shells or some kind of shells, and uh, it's easier to glue actual rock. And so, companies like Arizona Rock and Minerals make ballast in various sizes that. Uh, is actual rock and will not float up in the water-based glue. I'm Like I said earlier, I'm using this Woodland Scenics ballast for this because I have a bunch of it on hand. And I don't consider this as critical a uh, a job as a regular track ballasting job. In a few weeks, we'll we'll do a live stream on ballasting the Argo yard with Arizona Rock and Minerals ballast, and you'll be able to judge whether you see the difference in technique. This is a little bit like painting a room. You know, if you're gonna paint a room, you spend 80 or 90% of the time preparing the room for painting, and you only spend about 10% actually applying the paint. This is a little bit like that, because we're spending all this time um, just meticulously clearing the flangeways and then in, in no time at all, we'll be able to just spray the glue on there and be done with it. By the way, this is not by any means the only way to do any of this. I'm just doing it in one of the many ways I've watched other people do it. All right, so I think we can say that that we got this flangeways cleared and it's close enough to level. I'm a little nervous about leveling it again because then we'll just dump more ballast into the flangeways. So um, I'd, I'd glue except I just realized there's one other area we wanted to do which I think you can see, which is along the back here. Let's just quickly do that. Nothing precise about this, except that I want to take advantage of the gluing session to do it as well. After uh, the glue is applied, if we still have time, I'll um, we'll start putting uh, pan pastel on the um, on this black EVA and see if it will will do as well as I'm hoping it will. I'm not planning to put any glue over on this, so I'm not going to worry about it.
you know, so, you know, this reminds me fussing with this. Uh, Loose hobbies, ground through reminds me we need to we need to go back over here and check this. The last thing we want to do is put ballast where the throw needs to throw. We need to get that out of there. Aren't you glad I thought of that before we put the glue down? Now in this case the movement is towards us. But still, we need to make sure that we're getting that out of there. There's also a risk when we apply the glue that the glue will run down into this little slot and bind it up. So I just wanted to push that that stuff away. Now we'll we'll use um use an oil to make sure that stays unglued, unbound, unbound. All right, so I'm looking at this from a couple of angles and it's looking pretty good. So let's try gluing. Now the glue uh, process, you need to wet it down and uh, with some wetting solution, I'm gonna use alcohol here in a little pump a little pump bottle and it's a little hard to figure out how to do it without disrupting the the grains and this is another reason why using real rock is an advantage it doesn't take really that much alcohol to wet the surface but the problem is that then when you start putting the glue down um, it it can take a little longer, and then you need to reapply it. No big deal. All right, so we can always put more of that alcohol on if we want. Now you could use an eyedropper if you are a little more of a perfectionist, but I'm just using a big bottle of uh, diluted Elmer's here. And uh, I'm just going to drop it on. You see, it kind of pops right in there. But I'm quite nervous about the flange ways. So what I tend to do is, whoops. Oh, look how that just soaks it up. You can put a lot of this glue on it and you never even know what happened. Oops. Oops, see how hard this is to control? This is why it's really good to use an eyedropper. Now what we're gonna do is come back and clear the flangeways out again because I just love doing everything four times rather than just doing it once right. Just kidding. Okay, so making me nervous the way it just pops out like that. On the other hand, we could say, who cares? It's just a model railroad and we can always redo it later if there's a problem. Now this is that area that I just cleaned the flange way out. I don't want to have any extra material there, but I do want enough glue that it'll... There, that looks about right. And after we get enough glue on here, which will be a couple minutes, uh, I'll come back with some oil and oil that those points to make sure they don't get bound up in the glue when the glue dries. And they probably will anyway. Whoops. You can see how hard this is to do. I don't know what I'm thinking. I already glued that part over by the pavement, the black pavement. Are you keeping track? Did we get glue in this area already? I don't think so. Uh, 
when this dries, you won't be able to see it, the glue. But it'll be a nice, hot, hard surface. Now I'm going to do a I'm going to do a regular edited video soon about paving techniques because I've tried a lot of them and um, they all have their pluses and minuses. You can use uh, sanded grout, um, either pre-mixed or you can mix it yourself. Uh, you can use plaster, which Woodland Scenics also sells that in a milk carton. Um, and you can use um, spackle, quick, quick uh, dry spackle, which I've enjoyed that in a number of my roads. The only thing I don't like about spackle is that it's not very hard. So if you accidentally gouge it with a track gauge or something, then you have to go back and repaint it because you've made a white gash in your road surface. Whoops. Ay, ay, ay. This uh, bottle. I have to learn the technique a little better of using this bottle. If I turn it on its side, I don't seem to have that much control. I'd like one drop, you know, to go in there. I think we already did this area. So we don't, oops, need to do too much. There. Now, you've, if you've looked at anything on gluing down ballast, you've seen that they recommend putting way more than you think you need, uh, which is kind of the stage we're at now here. Oops. The thing, the problem with letting it run out like that so much is that if it, if it takes the ballast with it, then your surface is no longer smooth. Now, I guess you could always, oops sand this surface smooth. You notice there's a little white drop there, which is a piece of semi-hardened glue. And uh, I'll pick that out with tweezers later. It probably will dry clear anyway, so it doesn't matter if I find it or I don't find it. I don't know, that's, oops. That's starting to look It's starting to look fairly saturated. I don't know. I think we could put a little more on. But I am going to rewet this strip here because it's been a long time since we put that stuff on. And we'll just run up here with the. Now, um, if you just bear with me a couple minutes, we can, um, after this glue is down, we can try using the uh, pan pastel on the black because I want this black um, paved area that, that I made with EVA foam. I want it to look gray also. And the whole idea was that that might work to uh, just stain it. You, you know, I could also take a gray acrylic paint, you know, like a craft paint, and just put that on the... Uh, Oh, there's Barbara. My wife just got back from a walk. That may mean that we'll do the pan pastel later. Well, we'll just do a quick demonstration of it in a second. When you see those, those beads of white glue, on the edge to make you nervous, but my experience is it almost always soaks in anyway. So do we think we have enough? I think we have enough. So I had my pliers handy, which I don't seem to. 
but I can do it with that little screwdriver. We can just take that little piece off. And then we won't have to worry about whether it dries clear or not. Now, did, did we do the part over here by the dam? I don't think we did. I suppose that's another key to this is to not do too much at one time. All right. Were you able to see that? Yeah, you were able to see that. I don't remember putting ballast in here. I mean, blue. We were so enthralled in all the other areas. I think the part off to the right I already glued down, so we only need to do this part. Yeah, so far so good. It would be clever of me not to put too much glue in this part because I don't want it to run down the side of the fascia. All right, and what about that? Do we get that part? I think this was already done before. Yeah, that was already done before. I don't need to re-glue that. All right, now, did we get glue? Yeah, we got glue along the back. So before we sign off, let's just do one more piece of work here to satisfy our curiosity that it's possible to make this look a little less All right, looks like I got a little bit of glue there. So I'm using a paper towel to mop it up. So I have a gray pan, pan pastel. I have two shades. This is a gray that looks pretty close. And this is a little bit lighter color. I got these two colors and when I applied them, to a piece of this EVA foam. I guess it's this way. This was the lighter and this was the, the grayer. And you can see they're hardly different. And, you know, when I hold this up, it looks to me like the, the left side is closer to the gray than the right side. So instead of using this brighter one, Let's try this other one. Now I, I brought a, a pad from one of my wife's uh, blush on sets. Thought we would start with that. Now in theory, there are a lot of ways you can apply pan pastels. Um, but look how quickly this goes on and look how bright it makes it. I think this is going to be great. The thing that's really neat about EVA foam is that if you wanted to make a little crack in it, just make a crack with your fingernail and it'll it'll stay there. Um, it doesn't you know wreck this. I mean it, it just allows you to be artistic about it. And by using a big foam pad like this, I'm not getting I'm not getting brush strokes, although it looks like I am getting from the edge. I'm getting I want to make sure to keep using the middle the middle of my of my pad because the the edge seems to create a little bit of a of a line. But look how fast this is going. And of course, after, after it's done, I can come in and make sure to clean the top of the rails. I haven't really made a decision about how to do that, but one way or another should work. Oh, this is looking great. 
this is very close to the gray. And of course, we, as you saw from the aerial photograph earlier of the actual site, we want it to be slightly different gray from the uh, ballast that we just applied. So this is, I'm, I'm gonna declare this a, a roaring success, even though we haven't cleaned the track yet and tried running an engine on it. Actually, well, no, we can't do that because we have uh, wet ballast over on the other side. Now, if you can see, I'm gonna just try making a, swiping it. See, that's not good. I don't know if you can see that, but when I swiped it like that, you can see the ties underneath the, underneath this. Um, so I think a dab like this is a much better, dabbing it is a much better way to put it on. And it, it, it allows it to be, you know, uneven and you don't have the problem of brush strokes if you were painting it, but it, it just has a very realistic kind of um, uneven appearance with, but also a uniform color, if that makes sense. All right, well, let's let's call that good for today. And uh, I'll just show you that close up and then we'll sign off. We'll come back to this in another stage. Now, can you see how good that looks? Looks like, like asphalt pavement, which is exactly what it's supposed to look like. And then over here, this uh, we'll, we'll let dry. I'll probably come back after lunch and make sure there's no grains in the flangeways. And I'll take off this uh, tape dam. But I think that was, that was a fine bit of accomplishment for this morning. Thanks you all for coming. And uh, don't hesitate to watch the other videos on my channel. And then, where, where are we here? Uh, let me just flip myself around. Yeah, there we go. Until next time, have fun with trains. Bye now. All I have to do is figure out how to say goodbye.